Hello, live stream. Have you got me? Yes, it's all going off here. Have a great show. Wonderful. Hello, all, and welcome to the Raw Report. I'm Sonia Poulton, journalist and broadcaster. And have we got a show for right. you? Right, so let's get cracking with our news before we bring in our first guest, shall we? It brings me no pleasure to, to bring you this story, but I must. It's about vaccine passports. A few months back, one of our guests, Zed Phoenix, talked about a passport that would be introduced, which would essentially only allow us to do certain things, provided we receive the COVID vaccination. After Zed appeared, I received incredibly angry letters, incredibly angry tweets from people saying that conspiracy theories were dangerous and allowed true horrors to be ignored. I completely agree, but the only problem is we're not dealing with a conspiracy theory. We're dealing with a conspiracy fact. But the fact is... The Foreign Office, the Department for Transport and Department of Health and Social Care are currently working on what is essentially a vaccine passport. Don't let anybody else tell you anything different. It's no exaggeration to say that this may be required as a condition of travel and all manner of other things from booking hotels to visiting gyms. I'm told that a certification system, probably a digital certificate, is being planned. Greece as one example, are now preparing to waive quarantine rules for tourists who can prove that they have been inoculated against coronavirus. Yes, we should all be concerned. People need to understand this is not a drill. It's really happening. Our freedoms are being curbed and a new era of fascism is upon us. As one viewer, Jess, pointed out to me in an email, regarding the gorgeous destination pictures newspapers are using to accompany this grotesque news. Aren't they sly, said Jess, using such a pretty pick of holiday destination while delivering this bitter pill. Yes, Jess, it's propaganda and it works every time with so many people. And absolutely they are. So don't trust the COVID narrative in mainstream media. It's there for your enslavement, not for your liberation. One more thing I find disturbing regarding this is the famous people who are acting as vaccine propagandists. Latest promoter is talk radio broadcaster James Whale, who's had one jab and informs people that as soon as you get invited for the jab, you must go. No, you mustn't. And it's irresponsible for him to phrase it like that because he makes it sound mandatory, which it's not and must never be. This is drug pushing and it's unacceptable. Funny, eh? All these attacks on our freedom and liberties and all in the name of a virus that impacts only a tiny minority, which is not to take anything away from it. I'm not a COVID denier, but I do know there has been gross exaggeration and we are locked down based on extremely dodgy figures. So I wanna talk about the rich getting richer during this period because I just find it absolutely abhorrent. You know, it's a scary fact that COVID lockdown has led to one of the biggest wealth redistributions in my lifetime as we watch the rich getting obscenely more rich and the poor well we've yet to fully see how this period will harm those already struggling so it is that amazon boss jeff bezos experienced something of a further wealth explosion during this last year he's now worth almost 190 billion dollars which is horrendous by anyone's standards I am a firm believer that good people are not billionaires. I know that might be a controversial opinion, but that is my opinion. I believe it's an oxymoron to be a decent billionaire. I don't believe they exist. And the reason is simple. Given the fact that people are dying for want of food and water in our world, you cannot be a fine human being if you have billions to spare while people have nothing. But Bezos is now being asked to part with some of his cash by other wealthy people, including Phones For You founder, John Cordwell, who has asked him along with 200 plus other wealthy people to sign the giving pledge, where they are committed to donating at least 50% of their wealth to charity. Of course, who's to say what charities it will be? It'll probably be corporate charities, but I think it's a start, I do. Cordwell himself is, he has increased his own pledge to 70% of his wealth, um, which is a great thing, actually. The fact is, these extremely wealthy people remain extremely wealthy, even when they give away some of their fortune. And it's really the only wealth redistribution we should be seeing right now. Sadly, as the wise saying goes, some people are so poor, the only thing they have is money. I want to talk about something a bit quirky, I think is a bit quirky. Buddhists in space. Buddhist monks 
at the Daigoli Temple in Japan have teamed up with a satellite company, TerraSpace, to set up a temple in space. I kid you not. It will contain items including Buddha statues and will orbit Earth once every 90 minutes at an altitude of about 278 miles. The temple is world famous and has been around for over a thousand years and the plan is to create the first Buddhist shaped temple high above ordinary people. I'm struggling to say this without smiling. The monks have said they dedicate the space temple to protecting the universe, good for them. And once it is in space, people will be invited to take part in space prayer where the monks send their wishes as data to the space temple. When it's been received in the temple, the data will be stored and will be retained as long as the satellite stays in place. According to the temple, space Buddhist services will be held regularly at the temple in aid of, and this is their quote, the peace of the entire universe, including all on earth and the safety of human activities in the universe. The development of the satellite will start this month and the launch is scheduled for 2023. It is, as one might say, out of this world, which brings me very neatly to our first guest who is about to join us on the Raw Report.